welcome everybody to the Kona Shane Veterinary Podcast. My name is Dr. Andy Rourke. I am your host, guys. I am glad that you are here today. I am talking with the one and only Dr. Callie Harris on acute canine diarrhea on emergency. Are probiotics enough? This is a super useful, super practical podcast. I got a lot out of this. Yeah, it uh, it changed the way I look at some of the most common emergency cases I see, which is the acute onset diarrhea cases. Guys, this podcast is brought to you ad free by Purina Pro Plan Professional Supplements. Gang, let's get into this episode. This is your show. We're glad you're here. We want to help you in your veterinary career. Welcome to the Cone of Shame with Dr. Andy Rourke. Welcome to the podcast, Dr. Callie Harris. How are you? I'm doing great, Andy. Thank you so much for having me. It's my pleasure. Thanks a lot for being here. I, um, I have a case that I think you would be perfect for, and I'd like to get a little coaching on it. You sound good? That sounds great. I can't wait. Okay, so, so for those who do not know you, you are a veterinarian uh, with Purina. You are a practicing emergency veterinarian. And that is, that is the nature of the case uh, that I have. So I want to talk to you about the, uh, about the acute onset diarrhea emergency case. So it's Saturday. I have Walter, the two-year-old male neutered Labrador retriever, who has come into the clinic? He has got acute onset, a lot of diarrhea. He said he's had a, he's in like one bout of vomiting. Like last night, he threw up a little bit, yeah. um, but mostly is it's just a, it's a lot of diarrhea. I'm looking at this dog. The first thing I did, saying he's two year old lab. I, I I took some X rays. Mom says you know he he'll, he'll eat whatever. Sure. Um, but but she doesn't sure. think he's gotten into anything. She she's 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 flummoxed. She's like, I don't know of anything. He's not obstructed. I don't see any sort of sign of obstruction of obstruction. I'm 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 betting this is some type of dietary problem, but I, but I don't don't really know. Um, I also I want I want to be gentle with Walter here too. I, I I'm not trying to throw everything but the kitchen sink at him. Um, and at the same time, it's Saturday, and I don't want them to have to tough out the rest of the weekend with a therapy that's not getting the job done. Yeah. And so I'm trying to balance those two things of not not going hog wild. Uh, but at the same time, also taking taking care of Walter and 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 making sure they have a good rest of their weekend. Right. So let me just just hand this case to you at this point and just say, uh, Callie, how, how do you how do you how do you approach this? How do you treat this case? Yeah, well, Andy, this case I think all of us can relate to, and it always seems to happen on Saturday mornings, right? And you yep. already mentioned my background's in emergency medicine, so I'm working tirelessly, just like all my other colleagues in general practice as well as ER, trying to manage these types of scenarios in a quick fashion, an effective fashion, and a way, as you already called it, to where I can provide some relief, especially yeah. over the weekend. So let's talk specifically about little Walter here. Walter, this bouncing, happy Labrador retriever that's young. The first step that I'm always going to make, you've already done the diagnostics, but I always like to dig a little bit deeper into that pet's nutrition history, right? Okay. So I'm going to ask some questions. So I think one of the common mistakes that I used to make earlier on in my career is I always ask these vomiting diarrhea patient uh, clients, hey, has you made a change to their diet? Has there been any type of diet change that led to the onset of these symptoms? And a lot of times their answer would be no. Is no, what yeah. Yeah, what I've determined is that we have to be more specific. So I like to ask, what type of food is Walter eating? How long has he been eating it? Does the, Walter like to get into maybe some uh, table straps? Uh, does Walter, this two-year-old Labrador retriever, ha does he have a history of getting into the trash? Do you have any young, tiny humans in your household? So you know mm -hmm. where I'm going with this. Yeah. And then even taking it a step further, did Walter go visit some friends recently? Or does Walter go to doggy daycare? All of this just provides a little bit more insight for the client to say, huh, now that you mention it, he might have had access to a different type of treat. Or he might have been fed a different food unbeknownst to me. So I always yeah. like to start with that. Now, after diagnostics, I am so happy that Walter is not obstructed because that's the last thing I want right. to find on a Saturday morning. And you mentioned it, Andy. He's only vomited once. He's otherwise on my physical exam, bright and alert, responsive. Hydration is fairly stable. So then I'm going to say, let's try to manage the vomiting. And for many of us, that might be, hey, just hold off on feeding them, you know, anything for however many hours, 
Or maybe we take it a step further, want to give them a little bit of relief with an antiemetic or something that helps settle that stomach. But now let's focus in on that lot of diarrhea that you just I'm mentioned. How are we going to impact it? And that's where I would go next. Okay, well, hold on. Let me let me let me ask you a follow up question here. So, so we go through. I, I like the way you approach this because, again, I'm completely with you. It, it's a, we ask people, uh, did you feeding anything different? And they 100 percent just think about dog food, and they're like, nope. Um, and, and those are often not productive. How do you put that information to use, right? So when they come back and they say, well, I don't know, he might have gotten some treats from the neighbor or things like that. Mm-hmm. Does that change how you're approaching this? Does that make you feel better? I mean, if we still got copious amounts of diarrhea, yeah, you know, mm-hmm. like. Hey, how, do, how does that affect where we go? What am I looking for in that information, really? Where that affects me is because of this pet that has come in with this acute onset of GI, particularly the diarrhea, I want to figure out if it fits into certain categories where I feel like a probiotic is going to be beneficial for this dog. Okay. And some of those categories, we already know stress is at the top of the list. Any type of change in environment, dietary change, which again, doesn't just mean you know, you've switched the diet. That means we could have introduced some table scraps, introduced a different treat or what have you. That's why I like to ask those questions because I'm making more of a case for the benefit of utilizing a probiotic. Okay, unpack that for me because this is this is honestly something I don't, I don't, I've never thought about this in categorical, categorical approach. So can you break down for me? So, uh, so you said stress, you said dietary changes. Are there, are there other things specifically that you feel like, oh, these are things that, does that mean when you say it's a good case for, for probiotic that, that this is something that you anticipate you're going to get a stronger, better response to as opposed to other types of cases? How I look at it is that we know that our pets can be impacted by stress, where it's going to change their intestinal environment, right? Like okay, what sure. is happening at the GI tract? But what people don't realize that stress can be all encompassing. It could be the diet change. It could be us adding in a new medication. It could also be just age-related changing. I don't know if you know this, Andy, yeah. but getting old can be stressful. <laughs> I, I, I can attest to this. I've heard. So even for our pets, that can uh, be a contributing factor. And so I like to compartmentalize it like that because we know that if there is a shift in the bacteria within the intestinal tract, if there's some sort of an imbalance, that's exactly why a probiotic is going to be so powerful and so helpful. And so right. I am expecting it to be... Um, a problem solver potentially for these guys. Okay. All right. I like it. That that's super helpful. Okay. That that helps me understand where we're going and how we're unpacking this. Um great. Do you okay, so I'm gonna come I'm gonna come back to that. So you've gotten this information. I, I'm, we're gonna come back to sort of how we communicate this to, to the pet owner in a way that's gonna most likely get them to sort of buy into what we're doing and, yeah. and we're gonna get some compliance here. So so okay, so we've gotten through this. We've we've sort of asked our opening questions, things like that. We've uh, let's say that, that that you know we don't see signs of, of pancreatitis, things like that. Yeah. We're just dealing with with uh, gastroenteritis. Mm-hmm. Um, what are your go tos as far as therapy here, and how how do you start to approach this? So so let's say it's a diet change is is, is something uh, some some new kind of food he's gotten into. The neighbors mm-hmm. had the cat food out, things like that. Um, what are the building blocks that you lay down? I've always looked at, at, at sort of probiotics, which I brought up. I always looked at that kind of as a supplement. Yeah. Um, with, how big? How what are your building blocks? Where, where do pro, is that the last thing we add on? Is that kind of a little thing? Is that is that is that a central piece of your treatment approach? Help, help me see what tools you get out of your toolbox because I want to make sure that I have those tools. Andy, you are asking all the right questions and very similar to the conversations I have with my own vet colleagues, right? right. So I want us all to start looking at probiotics as an essential tool in our toolkit, not okay. just as an afterthought, not as just a, oh, well, this is something that you can pick up from your local, you know, grocery store or Amazon or what have you. And there's nothing wrong with going to those places. But I want us to really start to put this at the center of a lot of things that we do. And it doesn't mean that we're only going to be managing with probiotics. Uh, there may be a, a layering opportunity. We might have to intervene with some other uh, medical uh, management scenarios. But I do want us to get more in the mindset of looking at probiotics as an essential part of our management, especially with these acute onset GI patients. Okay. Okay. I hear that. So, so, so start laying it down for me. So what are you, what are you kind of reaching for? How are, what, so yeah, what are you reaching for? And then, and then how do you start to present these things to the pet owner to get them to buy into this plan? Yeah. So for Walter, okay. He only had that one bout of vomiting. So before we may decide to manage that, right? 
So give them something to help control the nausea potentially, or maybe I just give the recommendation at home. Let's just hold off from feeding anything by mouth for Walter. Depending on his hydration status, I may make the decision to add in some sort of fluid therapy or again, you know, make some different decisions based upon his level of of need. And then when it's time for us to go home and I am talking to the client about continued management for this diarrhea, first of all, I investigate with the client how much is a lot of diarrhea. And if they're describing to me that, okay, he got me up many times throughout the night to go outside, but he was able to hold it. And, you know, he was able to make it to outdoors. That's one category. Versus if they're telling me that my entire living room was sprayed with diarrhea, Mm -hmm. you know, and he was having accidents in the house, then that puts him in a different category as far as my decision making on how I want to intervene, how I want to layer. Let's say it's a typical case where he just had a lot of frequent bouts to having to go outside. Okay, yeah, He, he was crying at the door a lot. Okay, cool. Crying at the door a lot then I am going to encourage the start of a probiotic. Why am I talking about probiotics in these particular scenarios? <laughs> what, what do we like about probiotics? Okay. What is a probiotic for your, for your listeners? Most of us know that it's beneficial bacteria that we can provide to our patients, provide to ourselves to help uh, optimize overall gut health, to potentially replace what may be lost in the event of some sort of a disease state But there's so many great roles that probiotics play. When I think about giving a probiotic to my patient, I'm expecting to do about three things. I want it to, first of all, arrive alive into the colon, into the gut, right? The the area of maximum impact. I want it to, if you don't remember anything from this conversation, I want it to create, compete, and produce. Create some sort of a physical barrier, compete with bad guys in the gut, for nutrients and for space, and then produce other antimicrobial substances that are going to also provide overall gut health. So when you think about the mechanism of action of probiotics, you can see now why it would be very helpful for this to be an essential part of our management for these diarrheal patients. These guys, when they're coming in and they have some sort of trigger or onset, whether it's dietary or stress or what have you, we can almost expect there's been a shift in balance in their gut. And so that's why we've got to help optimize it and replace what what may be lost. Okay. I really like how you think in categories. This is, I, I, this is super helpful. I, 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 I like how you split this up. So in category one, uh, trying to go outside, um, you know, needs needs to make multiple trips, things like that. Category two, uh, it's bad. It's everywhere. How does, how does that change? How does that change your treatment approach? So this is going to be the ER vet talking, all right? Yeah, sure. That's that's what I mean, yeah. This is going to be the ER vet. And I'm going to preface this by saying that there are a lot of different opinions on whether or not to utilize antimicrobials with diarrhea patients, right? So from an ER standpoint, with exactly uh, the case that you started this off with, right? If Mm -hmm. I have the response that Walter has sprayed the walls of the client's uh, living room, then I'm going to likely partner up my probiotic with an antimicrobial that we commonly use, metronidazole. And I feel comfortable and confident with doing that because there have been studies to demonstrate that when you partner up metronidazole with a very specific probiotic that contains enterococcus PCM SF68, which is what's in um, a probiotic that hopefully all of us are aware of, Fortiflora, there has been evidence to support that the combination of the two can actually reduce the amount of days it takes for resolution of diarrhea. Okay. Okay. So that 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 would be that category. The one where they're spraying the wall, then I know that I need to do more of a layering effect. The one where it's like, yeah, he's otherwise bright and alert, seems to be okay, just need to go outside more often. Then I feel like we have more of an opportunity to just lead in with a probiotic and supportive care for the other signs. Okay. One of the things I need your help with, I, I need you to put me at ease a little bit here. I, I'll be honest, it comes down to the sort of expectations for for reaching for probiotics and stuff to treat diarrhea. Like I said at the beginning, I, I'm worried about sending this dog home on Saturday and being like, here's here's a, pro, here's a probiotic. And then Sunday comes and they're like, this is still terrible, you know. Um, what, I mean, what are the expectations of therapy? So I've got Walter and, and we're say, let's just say he's in category one. 
So yep. uh, category one is because this is this is this is why I like your categories. So for me, yep. I'll be honest. On Saturday, this person comes in, Walter's in here. I, I don't want him to have a bad weekend. I'm I'm looking at metronidazole probiotic combination real hard <laughs> and going. Mm, I'm probably not going to regret if I do this, but I do have this <laughs> nagging voice in the back of my head about antimicrobial stewardship. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I don't. I feel bad. I don't want to send everybody home with yeah. antibiotics. And I, I don't want to use them if I don't need to. And so then I'm, I'm really, I'm just being totally honest and, and transparent with you here. Yeah. I stand on, on the edge and I go, I'm not going to regret not doing this or I'm going to regret doing this. Uh, help me feel better about sending that dog home with just a probiotic. Yeah. I mean, it, it's your, yeah, help me feel better. I'm just I be can honest. I go, support you on this, Andy. I can help absolutely support you. So number one, let's just take a step back and remember that even our pet parents, have experienced diarrhea at some yeah. point in their life. I know that may be TMI, but all of us have experienced t- uh, uh, diarrhea at some point in our lives. That's yeah. the thing, okay? And I think all of us, majority of us pulled, could probably emphatically say that we have not been placed on antibiotics for our diarrhea. Yeah, no, okay? solid, yeah. You know, so that's something that I would just think of first, okay? Now, yeah. what the counter to that would be, but humans, we go to the toilet when we're having these issues. Our dog, you know, our pet, our pets, right? Our fur babies, they may not be going to the toilet Maybe with not. these issues, but their toilet is outdoors. And so if we go back to categories, right? We're talking about category one, as you identified, where yeah. Walter is letting his owner know that he's got to go to the toilet I, yep. outdoors versus him just spraying the walls, right? Yeah. So that is what I would want to encourage you, myself, because I need the same reminding. And then the rest of our vet friends out there in the world that are listening that just understand it, it's okay. It's okay for the dog to have diarrhea a little bit longer, as long as it's not causing severe illness, causing major accidents in the home. They're not terribly dehydrated. So just put that in the mindset. Okay. Yeah. Second, there has been so much information that have come, you know, which you have probably been aware of. A lot of your listeners have been aware of. There's been so much information that demonstrates, you know, that having or not having proper antimicrobial stewardship can absolutely make things worse for these patients, right? right? Mm-hmm. And so I like to keep that in the back of my mind. And then last, the studies, the demonstration, the utilization of a probiotic alone for these acute diarrheal cases, that information is out there. It's out there to show that yes, it may not happen overnight, but it's going to get better because you're ultimately giving that pet what they need, an improvement in that shift or that imbalance in their gut, in their gut, essentially. Yeah. Okay. That, that, is, that's really helpful. That that actually you you made me feel a lot better. You make you make a you make a <laughs> good. Good. No, that's a great way to think about it. And like that you you put a lot of my concerns at ease when I go okay cool. And your categories make a lot of sense. Uh, that that is a good way to divide the cases out uh, for for the benefit of treating. Absolutely no. And you're not alone, Andy. Uh, this has been something that I have had to coach myself on. And there yeah. are some scenarios where okay you know, go with your gut, go with your expertise, go with, you know, what has worked in the past for that specific category of patients. But I am just encouraging all of us to walk this walk and to start thinking about it differently, especially with patients like Walter. Okay. Yeah. I like this. Let's, let's stick with category one where Walter's crying uh, to go outside and things like that. How how do you, um, how do you start treatment with this dog? Right. Uh, Cause I always feel, I always feel compelled to try to give some sort of relief as, as quickly as possible yep. to start addressing. I want to feel like I'm doing something. I want the owner to feel empowered. Yeah. Um, talk, talk to me about how do I actually start treatment on this dog that's in category one, that's wanting to go outside and say, I'm going to yep. use a probiotic. How, how do I, how do I get that on? How do I get that on board? I guess. I, yeah. Board. Talk to me about that. <laughs> so if, if the vomiting is not as big of an issue, right? Let's right. say he vomited once overnight, hasn't had any more vomiting, is showing interest in eating, his you yep. hydrate or his hydration status is normal, then mm-hmm. I would say, you know what? Let's, you know, the nausea I feel like is under control. He's not showing any other signs of drooling or, you know, hypersalivation or whatnot. So then I would say, you know what? This may take a little bit of time, Mrs. Smith or Mr. Smith or whomever the pet parent yep. is, and say, I'm going to send you home with this oral probiotic that I want you to start this evening, okay? Start after, or maybe even this afternoon, after we feel confident 
that he's not going to continue to vomit. And then I'm going to encourage them to start it with the bland diet. You know, whether that's something that they are doing at home with the advice of their veterinarian, or if it is a commercially provided bland diet, either way, I'm going to make that recommendation. Start it with the next meal, preferably a bland diet. And with the particular probiotic that I utilize, it is a sachet that you open up the packet and you sprinkle it on top of the food. And as long as the pet has an appetite and is not vomiting, I feel perfectly fine with them starting that later that yeah. afternoon. Are are you doing straight up like full meals, like full bland food meals, or are you doing the meatball thing? And are you, are you like packing probiotic in the meatball? And so, yeah, like, like how, 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 what does that look like? It depends on Walter. Okay. okay. But my guess is with little Walter, the two-year-old bouncing happy Labrador retriever, mm-hmm. whether it's in a meatball, a patty, or you just scoop it out on his, just his tray, he's going to take it. The key okay. is what I coach my clients is just to start small. Like, it's just like us. If we've been nauseous, you know, we don't go and eat a big steak dinner. Yeah. We start with something smaller. And so that's what I would still encourage with my pet parents. You know, just don't go crazy with that first meal. And I like to do a bland diet just, again, to help support what may be going on with Walter as he's trying to get better. Do you, and I'm, just, I'm asking the honest question that comes to my mind, do you uh, say, hey, we're going to start this this afternoon, this evening. Do you give a second dose the next morning or do you tell them, or do you say, nope, seriously, once every 24 hours? Again, I, I, have, this, I have this desire to like get, get, get this on board. Get it go. I was like, I want to fix this. I want to fix it fast. Can we, can we, can we, can we pop like three packets uh, like every, you know, just to, to get started? I'm going to uh, tell you the truth, Andy. I have had patients that have gotten double doses of probiotics. I've had I'm patients sure. chew through whole boxes of probiotics. They <laughs> carry a very wide safety margin. But my, my recommendation, honestly, I like to give stuff in the morning. So let's yeah. say if Walter came in and I worked this case up on Saturday morning. I've given the instruction for him to get started at his next meal, which may be, you know, later in the afternoon, early evening. I am perfectly fine with them transitioning to giving that probiotic every single morning. It's once a day dosing. OK, yeah. so it, it's OK. Like if they started off in the evening and then only 16 hours, if we're splitting hairs, you know, goes by and they start the next dose. Not a problem, because, again, in my mind. I like morning administration of medication supplements. And I think most of my clients can appreciate that too. And so that's my typical recommendation. Get it started this afternoon or this evening, and then get yourself on a day-to-day regimen starting tomorrow morning. Uh, What I want you to be comfortable with is that you don't have to pack in as much probiotics as possible all in one (laughs) dose, okay? In fact, it's not really going to make a difference, okay? The only difference it's going to make is that it's going to cost our pet parents more money. Yeah, yeah. Now blown through all these probiotics that we sent them home with. You know, probiotics, the way that they work, it's a certain number of this beneficial bacteria that's being added, right? Yeah. And so their gut is going to do what it needs to do with the probiotic that we're giving. Yeah. No, that makes sense. I I know it's silly, but I think it's sort of like (laughs) if some is good, more is probably better. And I know that that's. That's that's silliness, but I anyway. I always have to. I just have to ask the question. How do you uh, how do you explain the benefits to pet owners? Do you go through the create, compete, produce sort of idea, or do you explain it in a more simple way of this is going to help calm things down? Like like what 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 are the words that you actually use to get them to go? Okay, I'm on board with this because I don't want them to leave also going. Man, I came all the way to the emergency clinic and they just gave me a probiotic. This feels this feels this feels like like I got gypped. Like, I, don't, I don't want them to have that feeling. So how do I how do I help them understand and, and how do I help them have confidence and feel yeah. taken care of? That's such a good question, Andy. And I'll say, <laughs> you know, I will I will pick my client with how deep I go into okay. the, the explanation. So as a rule of thumb, I think that anytime I describe a probiotic, I always like to relate it to maybe something for the pet parents, right? Do you take yeah. a probiotic? Do you, you know, do you eat yogurt on a daily basis? And that at least gets them on the mindset of, okay, what we're talking about. Then I go into more of a conversation of why this probiotic is going to be beneficial for this particular patient. So I describe what's going on with Walter. I describe what I suspect is happening at the level of his gut, why he's having all this diarrhea. And then I have no problem giving them a little bit more knowledge on the mechanism of action of a probiotic, as long as it's not going to confuse them 
And it's like you said, it's going to help with their confidence in it. I think yeah. where there can be a bit of a gap is if they are already on a probiotic themselves or they do eat yogurt, then mm -hmm. they're thinking, well, can I just give what I have at home? Can yeah. I not just give Walter some yogurt? I mean, some yeah. yogurt, right? I've a hundred percent gotten that pushback. I'm not, oh, I'm not right. kidding. I'll say, Hey, we're going to do this. And they're like, can I just give them some yogurt? Right. And I'm like, mm, we uh, no. all have. Okay. Yeah. And so then that's when I go into the more specific details of the probiotic that I'm prescribing. And so all of us have a variety of probiotics that maybe we're confident or comfortable with, but I like to go with ones that are widely researched that have the quality assurance, the efficacy, the demonstrations. And so that's what I will share with my clients too, is that not all probiotics or yogurt are going to be the same. So yeah. you want to go with a strain of bacteria that you know is going to provide benefit to what we're trying to treat. And this is a whole nother conversation, Annie, but Andy, but you know, probiotics can do so many different things, you know, from yeah. the management of gut health, to immune modulatory effects, to even neurobehavioral development. So I just try to be as simple and succinct and clear as possible that not one strain, it, you know, that it, it, they're not all the same. Right. No, that, that totally makes sense. Dr. Callie Harris, you are amazing. Uh, I really appreciate you talking through this with me. I, I, I gotten a lot out of this and I thoroughly enjoy it. And I love the way you think. I, I love how you split things into categories like that. Just, man, that makes so much sense to me. I love it. Um, where if, so if people are like, Hey, this, this is really great. I, I want to continue to learn more. I, I want to, I want to have these resources so I can feel comfortable talking to pet owners, uh, more about probiotics and things like that. W what resources would you call out? Where would you point people? So I have several resources, but probably the one that is at the top of my list and is my jam currently right now. Um, there, uh, so everyone's familiar with Purina. Mm -hmm. There is a scientific arm called Purina Institute, which we are utilizing this as our global platform where we truly believe that nutrition is better when it's shared. These conversations, let's take them back. Let's make sure that everyone's on the same page in the profession. So PurinaInstitute.com is a great place that I will send myself as well as my colleagues to get just great information on these nutrition hot topics. That sounds fantastic. I'll put a link down in the show notes. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate your time. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. And that is our episode. That's what we got for you guys. I hope you learned something. I hope you got something out of it. I definitely did. I really like the way Callie thinks. I like the way she breaks things up into categories. That answered a lot of questions for me. I was like, I was on the fence uh, about a couple of things. And I go, okay, if I split it up this way, it makes sense. I'll go this way one time and I'll go that way the next time. And, and that, uh, and then I feel good about that. So yeah, I, I mean, I just, I, I took some good pearls away from this conversation. I hope you did as well. Guys, take care of yourselves. Be well. We'll see you soon.